Hey there, all you filthy heathens. This is Kirk coming back to you again. Uh, just wanted to drop another video guy on you guys. I, I was hoping this video was going to get be able to get put out on uh, Friday morning, but it turned out, you know, my, my family got hit with some sort of nasty bug. So the entire house has been sick and just out all week for the most part. Uh, started with the little one and just gradually got up to my, got, started with my daughter, got up to my son, attacked my wife, and then I've been kind of struggling the last couple days. So um, this is mostly just going to be uh, me commenting on some uh, visits to the school board meeting and the city council meeting. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went to the school board meeting and the school board is just blatantly being as shady as fuck. They are being awful. Um, so what they did was they decided to hide a bunch of so there's a portion of of each school board meeting where you're supposed to put things that aren't going to be controversial just things that you just kind of throw in there as um you know things like oh we're going to we're, we need funding to you know uh you know paint the schools you know the school hasn't been painted in 10 years we're going to paint the school it's like okay i mean that's fine you know just regular maintenance of the school hey there's there's uh um you know, there, there needs a new roof. There's a leaky roof at this one school, so we're going to, you know, so we need to fix that. Great. Okay, wonderful. They're supposed to put that kind of stuff in there. Instead, they put something that keeps getting brought up at our, at our meetings. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. But they decided to put a controversial topic in there so that they could just not have to discuss it and just kind of pass it on their own. And they've done this before. Um, they will, they'll hide, uh, certain things. So when I first started going to the school board meetings, um, one of the first things a lot of parents told me was that when it came to the sex ed curriculum, they started moving the, the meeting time around and moving it to different times during the meeting time and, and things like that. So they try to make it more difficult for, for, uh, working parents to show up and address their concerns. So they moved, oh, it's gonna be during a, a day session. So it's like, wait a second, you're gonna schedule this at like nine o'clock in the morning on a on like a Monday or something? People work. And then they moved it during a different time. So they moved it to like one o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, well, wait a second. You know, okay, if I did take time off of work, now I have to go back to work. And so it's, the, the school board is just now being blatantly just shady as hell. So uh, I'm going to show you what I mean here uh, in a second by posting the video. So it's going to come up here in just a second. But this is just another example. So I could be just complaining about this. Like, oh, this is just an isolated incident of them doing something that they thought they had discussed enough. And now they're just trying to pass it and get it done with before Christmas. No, this is a this is something that is just um, standard operating procedure for this school board now. And it is it's getting really frustrating to deal with them and yeah so uh i'll just let you see what i mean by by just letting you see my comments hi i've spoken to a few of you privately and increasing the transparency of the school board came up as a reason for at least one of you to decide to run for school board but it is generally a goal stated by members of this board however i know now that this is a blatant lie <clears throat> i don't think anyone on this board gives a damn about being open and honest with parents. Mr. Vargas' voting record suggests his parent, his views on parents' rights, he views them all as homophobic, and he has stated he actively wishes to limit parent input into controversial subject matters in school. President Chairs Espinoza, we now know, thinks any classroom material she's never heard of is necessarily anti-LGBTQ, and that is the bias with which she makes decisions on curriculum. To paraphrase your own words, Madam President, you are not supposed to be only representing one particular community. You are supposed to be representing this district as a whole. Your actions show this is not what you're doing. This board's decision to try and hide controversial topics like the instructional materials policy under the consent, consent agenda so that you can lump it in with school roof repair and fire restoration shows a hostility to transparency and a level of corruption we expect at the federal government level, not our local school board. This kind of shady tactic isn't new to these members of the school board. 
One of the first complaints I heard from parents was how you all decided to move the sex ed policy discussion time around to make things difficult for working parents to attend the meeting and voice their concerns. On at least one other controversial topic, this board has delayed discussion to a later date, which I would normally approve of. Except that delay, in my opinion, was only to give certain members of this board a chance to organize local activists to show up, some of who use that opportunity to try and intimidate and harass concerned moms who attend these meetings. Since this board cannot be trusted to be consistently transparent, and this meeting's consent agenda provides another data point to back up that assessment, I'm calling on this board to remove item one from the consent agenda and put that as a standalone agenda item at a later meeting. And if you are all unwilling to do so, it just shows you're not equipped to take the heat for this position. And as my dad used to say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. So as you can see, not very happy with them uh, trying to just, you know, it, it's a it's a level of corruption, like I said in in the in the comments, is that it's a level of corruption that you expect at like a national level or even a state level, but at a local school board level, that that's not what we expect. We expect you know kind of more forthrightness and and honesty and they're not being they're not being uh transparent with us so that's that's really sad so um earlier at that meeting though i think it was right before i spoke um a, it was either right before or right after i'm not sure it was it was right there a mom had mentioned that she had to get a restraining order to protect her kids at school and something that i kind of noticed as a little bit of a trend going on at these meetings is that there are parents showing up and i swear it, it's got to be at least every other meeting so probably like once a month where you have parents showing up to these meetings saying my kid is being bullied and the school administrators aren't doing anything about it or they're not doing enough about it or things like that and i just got kind of sick of hearing those stories and since i knew there wasn't going to be a lot of people at this meeting because uh this most recent meeting is the final meeting before Christmas and New Year's. I decided that um, now was a good time to kind of bring it up, you know, at least broach the subject and then kind of throw out this whole thing. I was actually really concerned that people, I was going to get a lot of negative response to, to this suggestion for how to deal with bullying. And what was funny is that one of the moms that uh, normally comes to the meetings and she's probably the most outspoken of, of all the moms out there ab about uh, these topics that are going on in our schools, especially in our school district. Um, she, when I sat back down, she was actually one of the moms I thought would probably be the most like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and um, she was actually, no, that's what my husband tells my kids too. And I, I was like, I was actually, okay, good. I was, I was feeling a little bit better about having, you know, okay, I have, I'll, I'll have some support. Cause I always am concerned a little bit more. I think a lot of dads would probably be more like, yeah, right on. But I'm always concerned like moms would be like, no, don't, don't do that. And the basic recommendation was for, uh, for, uh, to teach your kids how to fight. And I, I probably should have made it more clear that I don't mean just your boys. I do mean your girls too. Everybody needs to learn how to fight. Um, but that's uh, that's the basic point I was making at this last school board meeting. And so I'll go ahead and show you what that those comments look like. I did go for a little bit more comedic effect, knowing that there wasn't that many people in the crowd. Um, I did make sure to go there. Also, uh, at the beginning of my comments, you're going to hear me uh, point to a guy to talk about um, and say what he said times infinity he is the uh, uh, oh my god I forgot his name really nice guy uh, he heads up an organization that promotes um, um, uh, you know basically uh, special needs uh, programs at schools and uh, he he was talking about how we need to treat our paraeducators better you know, pay them more, uh, whatever it is, and do better. And as somebody who has a a son who is on an IEP who requires uh, a paraeducator, and I'm actually going through the struggle of trying to figure out how much paraeducator help he actually needs, I am very much um, with that guy on 
on the uh, on the special needs issue at our schools because it is just it is obviously they are not treated paraeducators at our schools are not treated nearly well enough especially especially in compensation i mean they're paid minimum wage um are you getting i mean you can go work at mcdonald's for minimum wage so yeah it's a uh, I, I mean you are getting more you are getting more out of it working at the school but at the end of the day you got to pay your bills so there there is that so that's what you're going to see at the little bit at the end but then you'll go into then i'll go into what i what i actually stood up to talk about Uh, first thing, uh, as someone who has a kid on IEP who requires a para, everything that guy just said, times infinity, all right? Um, so you all be glad to know I'm not here today to discuss the pornographic books, our school libraries that are in our school libraries, that this board purchased at an exorbitant price. That's not why I came here today, so I won't mention it <clears throat> at all. Uh, a topic I've noticed keeps coming up at these meetings is bullying. Now, I'm not talking about the bullying that a a lot of us probably experience as kids, you know, being made fun of for a bad haircut, being bad at math, being short, being athletic, et cetera, et cetera, all that stuff. At the last meeting, a mom came here and stated that she had to get a restraining order against a student to protect her kids at school. One of the first meetings I ever came to, a parent was so upset about the racial slurs constantly being directed at her kids that she directed a racial slur at Mr. Yang, which was unprompted, uncalled for, but it does... She did it to make her point. That's how far it had gone for her. So I'm going to make a recommendation to parents that many people are not going to like to hear. But as Darth Vader said, search our feelings, you know it to be true. Parents, you need to teach your kids how to fight. And if you can't teach them yourselves, it's something you'll have to invest in. Now, personally, I recommend wrestling, jujitsu, or some sort of grappling martial art. Wrestling is probably your best bet since the schools have wrestling programs. These grappling martial arts are also the best value because they have the added bonus of your child being able to defend himself and being able to say afterwards, I never hit him. The confidence that comes from knowing you can defend yourself is life-changing. From my personal experience, I graduated from high school, 5'7", 145, fully clothed. So I was not a big person. I was bullied a lot less in school once I started learning various martial arts, and I attribute that to two things. One, bullies by nature are cowards. Anyone with confidence in themselves is a threat, and therefore someone for a bully to avoid. Two, learning to fight is a great way to get totally jacked, man. As the kids say, right? That's how the kids say. No? Okay, anyway. Um, seriously, though, even a physical... A physically small person in good physical condition can put off an aura of potential danger, and no bully wants to deal with that. Bullies want their targets weak and scared. Knowing how to fight makes you physically and mentally strong with less fear of any opponent. Parents, we all need to come to the realization that if you come to the government, which is what this board is, is the government, to fix your problem, you've already lost that battle. It's time for all of us to address this bullying issue. So... What I'm saying is that it is imperative that you all stop letting your kids be afraid of bullies and start making bullies afraid of your kids. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, I, I'm going to stand by this. I recommend that you, if you have kids in a public school, especially in a blue state, in a blue area, uh, teach your kids how to fight. Make sure they know how to fight. It's something you're going to need to invest in. They need to know... Uh, how to defend themselves because the idea that you can trust the school administrators and school staff to really advocate for your kids um it that's going to be hit or miss you got to make sure your kids can take care of themselves um, as best they can so moving on to uh city council meetings so i've been very absent from the city council meetings over the last couple of months, just with travel that's been going on and and such. And I said, well, it's the it's the final uh, city council meeting before Christmas, and so I decided we're you know I'm going to go to this final one and see what's on the agenda. I did have something I wanted to say last month, but they canceled the city council meeting right before Thanksgiving. So uh, I said, okay, I'll hold it for a couple more weeks and I'll just go and, and say it there. Well, when I got to the city council meeting, I started going through the agenda 
And one of the things on the agenda was they were going to uh, adopt a resolution that was a UN resolution from like 1979 that the US Senate never adopted, never got ratified. And, but my local city council was going to adopt it. And the bottom line of it is it says, you know, we're going to end all discrimination, end all discrimination against women of any kind is basically the bottom line of it. And that always throws up some red flags for me um, because there are certain discriminations that properly belong to women as it relates to things like, you know, they can get pregnant, um, other physical differences that, um, that separate men and women. And I, that always concerns me. So I made sure that I was, I said something about it. So I wrote out something really quick to, to kind of, you know, voice some concerns. Uh, I was even, even able to talk to the, the mayor a little bit afterwards. And she, and she was like, what are you going to say? <laughs> so she was a little bit concerned about what, she, what I was going to say. Um, once I heard the presentation on it, it, to me, it was fine. Um, it was, it's more of, it, it turned out to be something that's more aspirational. Like we want to make sure women are, are treated fairly and that's okay. Great. If, if that's what you're doing, you're just kind of doing something like we need to fight for fairness for women, which this was one, you know, at least 30 years ago. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but if it's something that you just want to make sure you keep in your, in the, you know, keep as a policy and make sure you kind of, Hey, we're still striving for the, um, striving for, for equality here as much as possible. Totally get it. Totally respect it. Um, I don't like that. Um, the, you know, I didn't put, I'm not going to post this, but the mayor and some of the presenters, they, they threw out some, some stuff that's obvious BF stuff that's been debunked a long time ago, namely the gender wage gap that's been debunked for at least 40 years. Um, it gets debunked every year, it seems like, and it has been, de it keeps getting debunked like every year for at least like the last like eight years. So I don't know why people keep quoting it. It's obviously bullshit. So <laughs> stop quoting the gender wage gap. Oh, women make 77 cents on the dollar or whatever it is now. It's, uh, it's not true. I mean, well, let me rephrase that. It is true. It's not true. Um, when you actually start digging deeper into the numbers, women make different choices than men. And that's why there is a gender wage gap. So it has nothing to do with discrimination. In fact, recently, I forget which big, big company it was, but they had a whole bunch of women in that company. I, for some reason, I want to say it's Disney. I don't know if it's Disney or not. So I, I don't want to throw Disney under the bus uh, for this. Um, but there was a company that just got sued by a whole bunch of, of women saying we're, we're paid less than men. And then when they did a whole study on it, they went through and checked and they found out that men are actually systematically discriminated against when it comes to pay. So they were actively paying men less than women to do the same work. And so that's what end, they end up finding. So every time something like this goes to court and they do the research on it, either there's no evidence that women are being paid less for the same work or they are actively discriminating against men to make sure women get paid more. So stop quoting the gender page, uh, wage gap. It's obviously crap, okay? So that's been proven for 40 years. Let it go, you lost. So that's, that's that. But here's what my comments were as far as the whole adoption of a UN resolution at a city level in California somewhere. Well, um, <clears throat> now that I've heard the presentation, I actually am rising to support this resolution. Um, I, however, you know, red flags always pop into my mind when I see resolutions like this, especially since I became a girl dad. So I'm, I always kind of take a extra look at these things. Now, this probably also has to do that, um, you know, I fear as, uh, as, uh, Ronald Reagan said, when he was speaking out against the equal rights amendment, that this could be used by mischievous men, uh, to eliminate proper discriminations that women absolutely deserve based on physical differences and differences they make in choices that are, you know, obviously diff difference between genders. So I do have a couple of questions and a, uh, I'm more wondering, is there going to be any kind of like, is there like a legal binding to this resolution? That's number one. Or is this just more aspirational? Because 
you know, I obviously want to, I want this town to keep striving towards that, the goal that women, like my daughter someday will be, um, they'll always be able to have the same opportunity that a man has, you know, no matter what uh, path they choose, whether it's homemaker or CEO or mayor. So, um, so that's really it. I want to make sure that we are, you know, this is a positive uh, advancement for women, not something that can be made bad down the road. So, Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. So as you can see, the city council taking up things that are really not in their purview, but it's meant more as like a symbolic gesture and kind of things that are ridiculous that don't need to be brought up. Uh, similarly, during public comments, it was after my public comment later, because I did speak again at the city council meeting. I'm going to show you that video here in a second. Uh, somebody brought up the Israel-Palestine conflict and wanted to, wanted, the, wanted our city council to talk about, like wanted to have our city council call for a ceasefire in Israel. And I, I'm, I actually was able to talk to the mayor after afterwards and even she was just like I, I don't want to put the 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 council through that it's it's something that and she said you know I have my own opinions on it and stuff like that and but it's not something that the council should have to be put on the record for uh it's it's again this is why you when you get in the habit of doing a lot of symbolic gestures people are going to think you're willing to do a symbolic gesture for for their good thing that they think is good. And next thing you know, it's you're you're doing you know gestures for you know to support Hamas, which is which is what any call for ceasefire right now is. If you're calling for a ceasefire in Gaza right now, you are advocating for Hamas and for Hezbollah and for all the other terrorist organizations that control the the uh, Palestinian areas in in that region. So that's what you are calling for. If you're calling for a ceasefire, that does not include uh, a complete and unconditional surrender of all Hamas leadership and their fighters and the return of all hostages. All of that, you get all of that, then okay, you might be able to convince me of a, of a ceasefire at that point. Yeah, once you have an unconditional surrender of Hamas uh, and the complete and total annihilation of their, their leadership and, and active fighters, Absolutely, sure. And once Gaza submits to a military occupation by Israel uh, for, you know, that will last for a, for as long as Israel thinks is the right amount of time. Sure, I'll talk, I'll talk about a ceasefire after that. But yeah, so that's, um, but ideally, city council should not be making proclamations on the Israel-Hamas conflict right now. So that's just the reality of that situation. Uh, but, but again, that's kind of why I took some time and made sure to comment on this largely, uh, you know, kind of just nice gesture that the, that my city council was doing. It really is kind of pointless, but I wanted to make sure we weren't, uh, you know, getting out of hand with it. Like, oh, ending all discrimination. Well, like I said before, there are certain discriminations that rightly belong to women and there are certain discriminations that rightly belong to men that we that we shouldn't be kind of brushing aside. So that was my concern. Um, you know, I was able to get that addressed uh, by the mayor and some of the city council members before I left. Um, but I wanted to end uh, the the year of these meetings on a little bit of a lighter note. So I did do a public comment about uh, something that was bugging me uh, for about six weeks now. And um, so I made sure to talk about it at the city council meeting and, and bring it up. Now, again, this is a little bit similar to the, to the school board uh, situation where somebody uh, said something ahead of time that I had to comment on just a little bit. And at this, uh, at this city council meeting, we actually had some local MMA fighters, young, young fighters. I, I think they were all under the age of 18 or they were around the age of 18, something like that. And they were, I guess, doing some amateur fights here. And one of them won a gold medal and two others placed, I believe. And these are MMA fighters. And 
I am really happy that we have some local kids here that look like they are, you know, our local talent is, you know, we're producing the future of the sport of mixed martial arts. And so I made sure to comment, you know, I have a couple of mar uh, mixed martial arts fight under my belt. Um, I wasn't any good. That's why I never actually, <laughs> actually competed beyond that. So it's, um, it's, uh, but it is a great sport and I, I've fallen kind of out of the loop on what's kind of currently going on in the sport right now, just because I, I don't, don't have the time <laughs> so to, to watch a fight, um, or really get invested in anybody in particular. So, but, uh, it is really good to see that. So I did make a little bit of a comment on that, but then I went on to, to give the rest of my, my public comments because I wanted, there is a concern that I have in the, in the community. It's a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun. And I want to kind of end the, end the year off on that. So here you go. <clears throat> All right, well, I want to start with, as someone who has three amateur MMA fights under his belt, it's nice to see that El Grove is producing the future of the sport. So that was really great to see, especially a young woman. Kicks some ass. I love it. Um, so <laughs> I promise I'm not here today to talk about how our local schools are paying up to 30% more than the listed Amazon price in order to add blatantly pornographic materials to our school libraries. I'm not here to talk about today, so I won't mention it at all. Uh, what I am here to discuss is something more lighthearted, uh, but still culturally relevant to the city of Elk Grove. I am concerned about the lack of trick-or-treaters I had in my door on Halloween, all right, and the lack of houses who participated in trick-or-treating this year. Now, in 2019, or as I call it, 1 BC, before COVID, I was pleasantly annoyed by the number of trick-or-treaters I had because they kept interrupting my watching of the World Series and because I thought I had bought a lot of candy, but apparently I did not because I had to start rationing towards the end of the night. We now have at least two Halloweens that should be considered post-COVID, and I have not seen an uptick in trick-or-treaters back to the 2019 levels. Now, it could just be my neighborhood, and I really hope it is. My concern is that the social cohesion that we had back in 2019 is taking too long to return. Uh, more evidence of this are calls by citizens at these meetings to increase fines for fireworks around 4th of July. Now, I live with a retired Vietnam War vet. I have plenty of friends who are Iraq and Afghanistan War vets. I know that between PTSD and having skittish dogs, 4th of July can induce crippling anxiety rather than joyous patriotism. However, there is nothing more un-American than a road sign that I saw in the Bay Area last July that said, all fireworks are illegal, happy 4th of July. <clears throat> this is on top of calls by local residents for the removal of free speech rights of parents who voice particular concerns at local school board meetings. Like I said before, I am concerned that the social cohesion that was at least there on the surface in 2019 is taking too long to return. I don't think there's anything up here that anybody, anybody up here can do. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure any proactive government response would be a disaster. Uh, I guess my hope is that our local community and members of our local community that are watching this might hear my words and remember to respectfully participate in those traditions we used to love before COVID, especially trick-or-treating, 4th of July fireworks, and this time of year, put some Christmas lights up on your house, please. And um, since this will probably be, the, I think this is the last meeting before Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. Thank you. Okay, so like I said, this is more of a, uh, a video just to kind of wrap up all the school board meetings and city council meetings that I've gone to and the public comments that I've given over the last roughly six weeks or so. And just wanted to keep you guys apprised of what I've been doing. Um, I, like I said, I wanted to get this out a, uh, you know, a few days ago, but like I said, just got destroyed with, uh, with some kind of sickness. So I don't know what it is, but I want to make sure I got this out as soon as possible, especially before the holidays. I know all of you guys are busy doing things and I have time to watch this video. So I wanted to get it out as quickly as I could. So, um, so I'm going to post this on Sunday morning. So yeah, Sunday morning. So, uh, yep. So I will likely not post another video until after Christmas, probably even after New Year's. Um, so keep an eye on that. Once I do, I'm probably going to start going back to, uh, not completely going back, but we're going to be getting into primary season. Uh, the Iowa caucuses, I believe, are middle of January sometime. And then the New Hampshire primary is just like a couple weeks later. So we're going to be getting to the thick of it. And it's either going to be 
really simple. It's either going to be Trump just destroys everybody and he just kind of runs away with the nomination, or this could end up at least going to Super Tuesday because if DeSantis wins Iowa, um, then it looks like that will probably mean that Trump wins, uh, that'll probably mean Trump wins New Hampshire and then Nikki Haley is doing well. It's her home state in, in South Carolina. So it looks like Nikki Haley is doing well there. Um, but we'll see, you know, what happens. Does DeSantis winning in Iowa, um, kind of make it okay for people in New Hampshire to vote for, uh, to vote for him? And maybe that kind of helps him in New Hampshire. Maybe that, you know, people in South Carolina see, oh, Nikki Haley is not the conservative we thought. We're going to vote for DeSantis. You know, what, what happens there? Can DeSantis take that momentum and kind of, you know, get there? But if, uh, if DeSantis wins Iowa, kind of all bets are off because anything can happen from there. And who knows? You know, Trump's way ahead in the polls nationally. He's way ahead in the polls in a lot of these states. Iowa is different because it's a caucus state. And, you know, and does that momentum help propel him into other states? I don't know. For all I know, sure, maybe he wins Iowa and then just gets destroyed the rest of the way through. Um, at this time, if I was a betting man, which I'm not because I always lose, uh, I would just say most likely Trump is going to just sweep everything and, and be be you know be the nominee. But I am still someone who is definitely behind DeSantis, 100% behind DeSantis. He's the best governor we've had in the country the last six years, uh, well, five years. And he's by far, to me, the best executive um, that is currently running for president. Even though we know what Trump would look like as president, Trump was not the president that DeSantis was governor. So we'll see. Like I said, I you know, I have no problem voting for Trump in a general election. Again, um, he convinced me that he was worthy of a second term back in 2020. Giving it to him in 2024 isn't gonna be that big of a deal for me. I just think DeSantis is the better candidate overall. He's the person I want to be president over over anybody else but if you give me donald trump for a second term sure sounds good you know all right so um so i'll probably get more into that and kind of give more updates on that i will hopefully be able to do more uh more videos uh from time to time as we as we progress and i might start just you know doing these videos on on x on twitter so let me know what you think about that. Leave me a comment. Should I should I start doing live uh, live videos on Twitter? You know, I'm I'm thinking about doing the the whole blue check. We'll see. I don't know. I gotta gotta sit down with the wife and go over the finances. I know it's only eight bucks, but still, you know, it's you know eight bucks. I could buy something else with. So <laughs> it's uh, um, so we'll see how it goes. Anywho, but you know, since I most likely won't be posting anything again until after new year's i want to wish everybody that is watching this a merry christmas and a happy new year's wish nothing but the best for you and your family and i hope everything turns out to be uh, better than you hoped all right i'll talk to you all later thanks guys